Hey, welcome everybody. This is TJ with ShopBot Tools, and today's training is going to be about uh, tips for cutting aluminum. So, what we'll do is we'll learn a little bit about aluminum, talk about some feeds and speeds with aluminum, got a few videos of some things being cut on the ShopBot, and then we'll even wrap things up with a uh, show and tell. A few users have sent in their projects that they make on the ShopBot out of aluminum. So, let's get started. So first of all, let's think about what aluminum is. It'll help us understand the material and why we have to cut it the way we do. So aluminum is a very lightweight, soft material, and that's what it looks like in its natural state right there. Um, the aluminums that we are cutting are typically almost alloyed. And when I say alloyed, I mean they've been partnered up with some sort of other agent to make the make them get the chemical compound that they have. So, you know, we're used to aluminum cans, aluminum ladders, but notice that there is something else in there besides the aluminum. So, aluminum alloys, there's different types of grades. Obviously, the uh, uh, cans, aluminum cans, are made out of a different material than, say, the fighter jet on the previous slide, and there's just different alloys that make them up. Probably the most typical one that we see out there is the 6061. That's just a, I'd say about in the middle, and it's real easy to machine. So tips for cutting. So what we're going to look into here is ways to not end up with the things that we see in these pictures. Uh, aluminum has a tendency to want to stick to the tool, so we've got to keep the chips moving. Um, it's not as easy to cut as far as past depths as our plastics and other materials that might be softer. It's soft but it's still harder than several other materials that you might be used to cutting. So we're going to decrease our past depth from our typical say quarter inch with a quarter inch bit to now take it down to 10 or 20 thousandths as far as 0 .01, 0 .02 deep. Um, and then we got to make sure we're clearing chips away. That bit that we look at on the right has um, the chips have stuck to this tool and they are now not able to be extracted away. So, And then we'll look at some different accessories and stuff. But first let's see the ShopBot cutting some aluminum on the desktop. Alright, what we're looking at here is a ShopBot desktop with an eighth inch piece of aluminum that is screwed down into the spoil board. And we have a uh, one horse spindle on this that has a eighth inch end mill. And notice I'm just doing standard cutting. I got the guard removed for the video, but here's me just cutting. No fluids, no outside things. And as it, yes, it will do this, and you can see it's clearly cutting. Just a straight aluminum cut without lubrication or anything is going to wear that bit out a lot faster. So um, that's just to see what's going on with this. Alright, after just seeing it there cut real brief, uh, you can see that it's cutting aluminum just like it would any other material that you've probably cut before. But let's take a few more things into account before we move on. So as far as the feeds, feeds and speeds, you got to dial that in a little bit more. There's not as much play, as, say, as there would be with just cutting plywood or uh, MDF. So uh, what we're going to look into here is some feeds and speeds and some accessories. So right here is the best thing you can do is always calculate chip load when it comes to aluminum currently with the software we send out a bit in our shopbot desktop starter kit that cuts aluminum with an eighth inch straight and a quarter inch up cut now that's not to say that any of these other bits cannot be used notice this quarter inch up cut one three seven two nine is also underneath plastic and also underneath wood the same bit what is changing over here is the feeds and the speeds, and that all goes back to chip load. And chip load's a whole another training in itself. But what you do is type in your chip load. You got your chip load calculator that's built into the SB3 software. You've got the back of the Onsrud catalog or from their website. And notice that things are looking pretty familiar over here. I've got a feed rate that's going to keep keep me moving. Um, but what I've changed over here is I've got a pass depth now of 0.01, 10 thousandths. So I'm only stepping down a little ways into the aluminum. If I dig it down too far, too fast, um, it's not going to have any place for those chips to extract to, and they're just going to uh, stink up on the bit. So dial in your feeds and speeds, and always make sure you got a chip load that, that fits in with the bit that you're using. 
So here's some accessories that can be put on, and you're going to want to have one of these if you're going to be doing a fair amount of aluminum cutting. Is first of all, this one's a cold gun, and it's, it's you can see here that it hooks into an air compressor. So you do need to have a, a, a air compressor that's able to keep up with the constant uh, need of air on this. But it what it does is it cools the the air right down that's coming out of the gun the tip of that gun onto your material will cool the material if you have it positioned right along the material so it, it it's not that loud it says it's about a 70 uh, decibel level and the thing that's really nice about this is you don't have any cutting fluid or spray so there's not a lot of mess you find out when you start spraying stuff it gets all over your machine soaks down into your spoil board uh, they are. They do have a magnet on the back of them, so you can stick them onto different parts of your. Uh, well, on the bigger machines that are steel, or on the desktop, you have to f uh, figure out a jig to mount that to. They're around three hundred dollars, a cold gun, and there's the resource for you. You can check out their website, and 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 see them. Another one is a mist coolant dispenser, and these are kind of nice because instead of just having coolant run all the time, which might be something if you're cutting aluminum, you have a designated table that might have a uh, something that's constantly running and recycling the fluid but this one's very nice because again it hooks up to the compressed air and by pressing on the trigger what it does is it's, it spritzes it out so it's more of a mist and it'll actually dissipate versus um, sticking all over and making a big pool all the way around so you just will constantly s press the lever and spritz it as it's needed uh, it'll both do air and water, so you can check them out, and I'll show you where to get those from right here at McMaster Car. There's the one that we have in-house. It's got a 20-inch hose, around, what, $134 on there, and uh, it's, check that out, McMaster Car sells them. They're manufactured up in Ohio, um, and they're, they work real nice, no mess, and make it real easy to just spray and mist on there. So, before we move into some more of the videos showing these things in action, is aluminum. Know what grade of aluminum you have. You've got to know that material. See if it's that common one. It's usually stamped somewhere on there. Like, like sheets of plywood will have a stamp of their grade. So will the aluminum. So look for that. you got to find the right bit. Bit selection is, is, is crucial. You are going to see here in a little bit where we do a 3D carving with a 8th inch tapered ball nose. So uh, you got to just double check that the bit will have the right geometry to cut aluminum and then you gotta dial in the feed and the speed for it and as always before you go to that nice three hundred dollar piece of aluminum that you cut you want to make sure that you test it on a on a scrap piece or off on a corner that's going to become waste before it dig right into the middle of your nice billet so let's move into the video of seeing this stuff in action let's take a look at those accessories we just saw in action out here on the machine so we did the H first and that's where we didn't have any any kind of coolant or air or anything blowing on that but now to help save the life of that bit and help keep the uh, temperature down on this cut I'm gonna put the cold gun on and you'll be able to hear it I'm gonna leave the volume on during the cut so you can hear it so there it is, the compressed air and it's got a flexible end Blowing right where your cutting is happening, it's going to keep the temperature down on both the bit and the material. So that thing's blowing as it's cutting, and like I said, it's it's getting, it's going to help keep the temperature down at the, where the cutting area is on the bit and the material. Again, that's a that's an eighth inch end mill. And you can see here we just put a quick uh, reading on the gun, and it shows that it's bringing it down. Just that was me just turning it on after 30 seconds of running. The next one we're looking at here is the Mister. So this one hooks up again to compressed air. It's got a tube going down to a reservoir, a bucket of of a coolant, which you can get right from the McMaster site if you buy the the sprit spritzer from them. It's right next to it there. To sh it's the same thing right on the same page. You can click on it. But what you do with this one here is just adjust this and have that going along a bit and then you press the lever and what it does is it, spr it spritzes out the the cutting f fluid and it, it'll dissipate whatever's extra so versus constantly running where it's going to have a big pool of fluid building up it's just kind of mists it and lets uh, you know 
lot less mess let's just call it that so those are the couple accessories that we showed in the tutorial and now I want to get into showing you the shopbot cutting aluminum in 3D all right we've opened up Aspire and we're looking at a 3D relief model inside the software so just to show you here's our 3D model that we're going to be working with and the to look at the job size it's just a little carving we're going to do it's only three inches by three inches and for a lot of us that have done a lot of 3d carvings uh, we don't always have to run a, a roughing tool path especially when we've got a model like this that only has a depth of 0.1612 but now we're talking about aluminum something that's a lot harder and we want to make sure that we get in there and re, re uh, carve all the stuff out with a heavier bigger bit so when I say 3d roughing on this we're going to want to come in and have a roughing tool path first which is going to go in there and it's going to aug all that material out before it comes and does the final finish which is the nice clean finished one so again depending on what bits you're using you go into your tool database and you need to select the bit and always go and double check the feeds and speeds with the chip load calculator so I use the eighth inch end mill notice my pass depth is point one. I don't have it I have an RPM of 14,000 and a feed rate of 2. So between those two and that pass depth, I'm getting a good chip load on this. Um, now when I do my finishing, because I've roughed that out, and notice I've only left about a 10,000, 0.01 for a machining allowance on this. So now I can come in with a small 16th inch ball nose. And this here I've got set to actually cut 3 inches a second and 3 inch plunge rate. Make sure whenever you're doing the 3D that you got your feed rate and your plunge rate at the same rate. But I can have them higher numbers now because I've, I've roughed out the bulk of that material. And for cutting aluminum, this is how long this project took. The roughing was about 20 minutes and the finishing was about 16. And I'm sure if I would have dialed it in, I could have had it even a little bit tighter than that. But that's still... Uh, just over a half of an hour to get a 3D carving out of a piece of aluminum. So let's take a look at this cutting. Here we go, we're cutting the aluminum now. So first things it's doing, here's our desktop. I've got it held out in the middle with some uh, very high bond VHB tape. And there's that eighth inch end mill doing the quarter inch pass. Or doing the, doing the, the um, sorry, the roughing pass. And as you see, it's only going 0.01 down per pass, 10 thousandths and it's going to start going around the 3D and leaving the higher spots just as it normally would. But with this harder material, and you're going to use a small little 16th inch bit to do your clean up and your finish, you're definitely going to want to rough this thing out. You want a good set of dust collection too. you got to watch these chips. You don't want them getting in with wood and um, look more into the proper way to, uh, of collecting the chips on this. Make sure you're spritzing this. Make sure you're keeping it cool. You don't want these chips flying all over. It does make a mess. You can see that table is pretty beat up. We do a lot of testing back on this desktop and it takes a lot of abuse from us gluing things to it and spraying things all over to it. And notice too when you get that fluid down in the MDF it can you know warp that and twist that up a little bit too. So so what's finishing up here the final parts of the roughing. And then what we'll do is we'll switch to the 16th end mill and start the 3D carving with the finished tool path. So here's the roughing and now here we've got the 16th inch tapered ball nose and that's going to give us the fine detail in the aluminum so we're now cutting you know faster three inches per second with the plunge rate and the feed rate the same and a nine percent step over so the 16th of an inch is stepping over nine percent each pass so there's just a little bit of material taken off uh, but we're able to get that fine resolution right there But keep an eye on your chips Try to keep them from going everywhere. If you have a dust collection system that can suck them up and keep them out of your machine bed. One thing that is kind of annoying too is you might want to put down a temporary machine bed for this stuff because uh, you get those aluminum chips that are embedded down in the MDF and then when you go to put your nice piece of say mahogany or walnut on there next you don't want those chips to get uh, stuck up in the nice piece of wood that you have. So. So here she is just about finishing up and this is showing you doing a 3D carving on the desktop out of aluminum and when this guy finishes up we'll move into showing some of our show and tell what our customers are doing with their aluminum cuts.
I will wrap things up with a little bit of show and tell here. So, uh, dye bond is an interesting material that has aluminum on the outsides and it's sandwiched in a material in the middle of different color cores you can get. And Bob down in Australia showed, uh, shared this with us and this is showing him where he did an engraving on a sign. And also this works very good for doing uh, box joints with a V-bit. So think about a box that's unfolded into one flat piece and then you'll take a V-bit and actually score through most of the way through the material and then it'll fold right up. So real neat material to work with. Cuts very nice on the shop bot. And thanks again for sharing that, Bob. Our next one here was showed, shared with us by uh, John Hoffman and uh, he cut it uh, using a quarter inch bit out of aluminum and it is a jacket cover for a 1928 Oldsmobile so he had Grant Bailey design this for him and then they tooled it machined it and it looks great on there so nice work with the uh, cutting aluminum on the shop bot. This one here is a uh, this was cut by Ryan here at Shopbot, but this was a project of the month from the Vectric page that Michael Tyler had designed and um, on there they did it with wood and painted it up and it looks great but Ryan took it to the next step and said let's cut this out of aluminum so he put it on the desktop and cut it out with an eighth inch tapered ball nose and that came out real well so that's going to wrap us up for our training on aluminum so I hope you learned some tips and tricks that will help you putting uh, aluminum on your shop bot and cutting it out successfully so thanks for joining and we'll see you next time